as nice as this fire is on a chilly December day in Canada, I'm more excited about what it's gonna produce when it's all burnt and done. Ash, more specifically, wood ash. It's been used for centuries in farming and agriculture. Just what exactly is in ash? Is it safe for our plants? And is it of any benefit for our gardens? Yes, yes, and yes. I'm gonna explain why. As well, let me show you four ways that you can incorporate ash into your garden safely. And it starts right now. First up, let's talk about what ash is and what it's made of. Ash, or pot ash, refers to the ashes of burnt wood and plants. Before the industrial age, you know, before chemical synthetics even existed, pot ash fertilizers were exclusively produced in this manner. In fact, the K macronutrient in our NPK fertilizer rating system is potassium. The word potassium is derived directly from potash. So what's in this stuff? Well, the main ingredient in burnt wood is actually calcium carbonate, essentially lime. It's why ash has often been used to control acidic soils because lime is inherently alkaline and lime has always been the primary compound to raise the soil's pH. The other major ingredient of ash and the one that we're after is potassium. As we mentioned before, potassium actually derives its name from potash directly. Now, we know potassium is one of three macronutrients required by plants in much higher quantities than other elements or compounds. And thus, just like nitrogen and phosphorus, it garners much more of our attention when amending our soils or feeding our plants. So why is potassium so important? Well, plants use potassium to sustain growth through four key benefits. It's necessary to help plants establish new and better roots, greatly improve drought tolerance, increase disease resistance, and it's right at the heart of a plant's life cycle being required for photosynthesis itself. Back to the potash, but before we get to the application, let's not forget about calcium. Widely regarded as the most important of the three secondary macronutrients, calcium is essential to plants. Its main role is being involved in the development of cell walls, of all plant cells, in both the leaves and the fruit. Okay, so now we know what's in ash, and we know that it can be beneficial for our gardens. So how the heck do we use this stuff? Well, there's four key ways that I use it in my garden, so let's dive right in. The first way to use potash in your garden is to simply add it to your compost pile. Just toss it on top, there's no need to mix it in as it's highly water soluble and it'll find its own way into the profile quite readily. Easy stuff. The second way that I use wood ash in my garden is as an amendment for potting soils. As most of you know, I love to make my own potting mixes as I find the commercial ones lacking at best. And a great amendment for my mixes is ash. I use it in a strength of no more than 10% of my total volume. Just mix it in nice and thoroughly. Remember though, don't overdo it, as ash is alkaline and most plants prefer a neutral pH range to grow in. The third way that I use ash in my garden is to top dress existing crops. Simply spread around your ash amongst your favorite crops nice and evenly, right on the surface. Even on top of that mulch is perfectly fine. Remember, the ash is highly soluble and we can simply water it in later. The fourth and final way that I use potash in the garden is to dissolve it in water. I do this at a strength of two tablespoons per liter of water. Using your favorite watering can, just liberally water your crops once or twice with this solution during their life cycle. I like to apply it early on especially right after I first transplant, 
because that potassium is super beneficial in that root development. It can really help to get that new crop established. While potash works great for most crops, there's a few that you're gonna wanna avoid. And this is due to the change in pH to the alkaline side that we mentioned earlier. So things like blueberries, huckleberries, and cranberries are all out of the question. Also, it's advised to not use it on corn, beans, broccoli, potatoes, and radishes. Basically, if the plant prefers to grow in an acidic soil, avoid using potash as a fertilizing solution. But next time you're looking to throw out the ash from your fireplace, or maybe your outdoor fire pit, think again. It could just have a use in your garden. Hey, if you've got any other uses for potash that you didn't see mentioned in this video, share it with the community down below. Also, if any of you are on Facebook, head on over and join our gardening group called Growing Better. The group has grown phenomenally fast, yet it will never lose its sense of community or its welcoming feel. If you're passionate about growing epic organic fruits, herbs, and veggies for you and your family, the Growing Better group is a great place to hang out, share, learn, and grow. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, Hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind, and I'll see you in the next video.